So this was uh, one of the things we found while we were tearing apart the wall for the for the bathroom here, and it was an old Sears ad from back in the day. And it's kind of, it was kind of fun to look through the old advertisements and some of the pricing and stuff. Hey guys, so today we are here with Swamp Creek Cabin, and I have to tell you that they don't do justice to how stinking cute this little cabin is and what they've done with it. When, when you see it in, in, your, in, in its entirety in real life, it just blows my mind how much work you guys have done on it. And We like to bite off more than we can chew. Do you, really, do you think it's more than you can chew? Because it seems like you've, it's obvious how much work you've done on it. Yeah. And it does at times seem like, wow, the scope of this project is a lot bigger. But then we kind of break through. Like, yeah. we have a breakthrough and then it's like, oh, awesome. Like we're really we're really clicking on it now. Yeah. So how many square feet? I come in here and it's one of those really cute little cabins. It feels like it has nooks and crannies and corners and secret hidey holes. How big is it really? So the footprint is 24 foot by 28 feet. So the floor plan at the bottom is like 600 square feet and then there's a little loft upstairs. So we're just right about 800. And it isn't just Robert who helped with it. Dee Dee also has building experience and she's helping <laughs> with everything that's happening and has her own building projects. Good morning guys. Okay, so what I'm working on today is I want to finish trimming up the bathroom. and she's helping with everything that's happening and has her own building projects. But where did you guys gain the confidence, work background, education to be like, hey, we can do this? Uh, well, I took um, a lot of wood shop classes in school and so like, I took a couple years of cabinetry making. Um, and so I guess some of the finer stuff has been learned on that. A lot of it we've just learned we are, we were poor and we bought fixer uppers and we had to fix them you know and so yeah. just learned over time uh, working on our houses that we've had and then my my brother-in-law uh, helped him he built a, a big shop with a like a apartment on the back for for her mom and uh, just helping with that just picking up skills where I can over the years yeah, just working with other people on projects and yeah. kind of gleaning their knowledge I know you guys still have a mortgage but the decision on which property you chose and to decide to take the little house and fix it up and really live the adventure how did you guys decide to do that and and instead of like hey we'll we'll just go on to a little bit bigger house in the next neighborhood over and get more equity doing that how how big is your property and and why did you decide to do it this way and would you do it this way again yeah we kind of had a checklist that we were going off of and and trying to find a property that fit all those obviously is uh, is difficult, you know, um, and sometimes you may have to make comp compromises here and there. This one needed the most work, but uh, as far as the land and the property and the layout was the closest to, to what I was looking for, because uh, I wanted to be able to have timber uh, as a huge resource for, you know, for fuel, for heating uh, the, the cabin. Uh, for like woodworking projects. Woodworking projects, mm -hmm. milling up timbers and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, having wood you know, or, or trees on your property is a huge resource. Um, so that was a big, big check off on mine. Water, you know, obviously doing that. Uh, in the area where we're at, you have to have sand filtration, uh, certified sand filtration put in. And so that's like 30 grand for septic. Um, it would have been just a short run uh, to this house. If we'd had to put it in, it would have been like 40 grand. So those two major infrastructure items were already put in place. Um, so we didn't have to have any outlay of funds for that. But the money that we saved on buying the property because it, it was the house was so dilapidated that it was a hindrance to the person being mm -hmm. able to sell it. Um, so we got a really good deal on it for the area. So the money that we saved on that, doing it ourselves, once we're done, we'll be at least probably a hundred thousand dollars ahead. Yeah, m maybe hundred fifty. Uh, even though it's a slow, laborious process, and there's right. a ton of sweat equity that we're putting into it. So Dee Dee and Robert didn't live in the little house initially because it wasn't quite livable. Didn't have a bathroom. There was enough major work that needed to be done that they couldn't live in it. But how much was it for rent in this area? So rent in the area we're at is is expensive. Like Fifteen hundred dollars a month. It's it's more than house payment. It's crazy. Yeah. 
Um, and so we looked at renting and, we, and there's nothing available and anything that was was, was hugely expensive. So we um, bought a fifth wheel and we lived in that and our payment on the fifth wheel was $180 a month. Like yeah, that. and when we first moved down, we moved into a RV park that was out of town, and mm -hmm. I think we paid three thirty a month for our yeah. space rent. So even with that, you're still only looking at five to six hundred dollars. So we would have spent more than double on that just trying to yeah. live in a rental. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all of the utilities you have to pay on top of yeah. that. So we figure, and where we were going from two incomes because I worked part time um, down to just Robert's income until I found work. It was important <laughs> to find a living situation that would work for us financially while we were looking for a house and we didn't want to dip in and start using our savings and, and the money we had gotten from selling our last house so that's why we ended up purchasing the rv and staying in an rv park mm -hmm. and the gentleman we just we actually just hauled it off this um this what yesterday mm -hmm. hauled it off yesterday and the guy thinks we can sell for more than we paid for it yeah. so we should yeah. hopefully come out ahead if, if not even yeah. yeah we you know as we get closer to um, finishing and as the money that we've had that we've set aside for the project as that dwindles um, we do have the resource for example if we get down to flooring and we're running low on money um, I might be milling my own flooring you know <laughs> yeah yeah um, so some of those bigger projects like the roof and the well you know, we we have savings and money set aside for those because it's easier to save up six hundred, a thousand dollars to reframe a wall and redo a certain area that you know from just what we're pulling in over mm -hmm. the month than it is to come up with ten thousand dollars to do a well. So right. all of that big stuff we've set money aside for, you know, to accomplish those things. And then if you know once we run out of the other money, those smaller projects will do as we're bringing money yeah. in. You know from the month yeah and and we've bought fixer uppers over the years so as we as we fixed them put our sweat equity into them and sold them we can take we've taken that equity and, and we're able to use that right you know yeah. now so how much do you think you save on any given project by doing it yourself as opposed to hiring somebody else to do it well for instance Depends let's the... talk about your door that you built oh yeah so so i built a door um for the actually i built the door for the bathroom and then a door for the front of the cabin um, I went and looked at the one for the front that I just built. Um, I've got probably $125, maybe maybe $150 into that. And I was at Home Depot looking at doors, and I'm like, oh, that's a nice one. And then I look at the price tag on it. And something similar to that, you know, obviously more, a little more professional and, and fancy. Well, don't, I don't think you should say that because I love that. <laughs> I, similar to that something at Home Depot that, is beautiful. like $2,000. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go buy some cedar 2x6s and get a skill saw and a router and and make yeah a door, and the, you know? all the glass insets we paid a buck a piece for the little <laughs> glass pieces at an antique store I love and that. Yeah. so we've just been carrying them around for with us for a few years mm -hmm. waiting for the right project but yeah um so make sure to go check out their channel is swamp creek cabin and do you have a blog yes it's all on our website at swampcreekcabin.com okay so make sure to go check that out um i just think it's an incredible adventure and it's really fun to see it so uh there will be some other videos coming up from their from their um homestead that'll be on my channel still so make sure to watch for those and i'll put links below and also in the cards and we'll talk to you later one of the comforts that we wanted to have was running water yes. um it was one of our basics that we needed to have we didn't want to run down to the creek or run down to the spring um to fetch water every day just because you got snow in the winter and that's not uh, convenient. Um, this room right here is where the kitchen is. This will eventually be uh, the bedroom, the master bedroom. Um, up above this is the loft. Uh, when they built this they put a pretty long span in here uh, where these are and I think that's why they have this braced up right here is because it's a little bouncy upstairs and Needs probably needs course. a little support, <laughs> support. For, so, for right now it, it's okay for now, for now it works but we'll, when I tear into it we'll uh, we'll see what we're working with and it's okay do you think <laughs> that you will reuse the lumber and use it somewhere else once you have the beams in yeah so a lot of things we want to save like there's shiplap on that wall over there um, so yeah, we'll try and reuse it. We we saved some of the shiplap from the wall we tore out over there yeah because this door um, is going to be gone so 
eventually we'll fill that back in with the ship lock that we should save from the other door. And, and that's been a, a, a struggle for me is I'm, I've always been the guy that just rip it out and haul it to the dump and I haven't been letting him do that. She hasn't been letting me do that. And then we came and worked on your stairs and using all the three claim stuff. And I'm like, ah, that is pretty cool. So yeah. it's been a, a struggle and a journey for me myself to uh, go, okay, I can spend a little more time, tear the nails out of this board to, you know, use this here and there. Um, you know, it looks pretty cool when you're done. So. Yeah. That's and cool. yeah, so eventually this will be the bedroom. I, I'm not sure what you'll do with the ceiling, but I really, I like the beams showing and stuff. And so I would like to keep that. I'm not sure how we'll work that out with structurally if we come in right in the middle with a bigger beam or how, how we do that. But I like the open, I like the openness of it. So did you guys ever use the wood cook stove? I mean, it, it's just a stinking it's, cute little stove. Did you, did you find it effective in the winter? We, we did I, not use it. No, I was working two jobs all the way through the winter and I just, I did not have time to mess with something that has a learning curve and that takes so much time um so i mean we threw that up there and yeah we've just the, been using the, <laughs> the, the propane, propane stone. one on top of it for now but we do we don't plan on keeping because the house is so small i have to be really selective with what will be in here and um we are super busy so i have an actual gas you know range that will go into the kitchen so but we will keep the wood cook stove and we're going to build an outdoor kitchen so one thing we've been using to filter our water is a Berkey. Um, heard good reviews of them online if you uh, are wanting to filter water that you're not sure about. Mm -hmm. And so it'll filter out all the stuff that can make you like, uh, that can make you sick, like the, the cysts, the giardia, all that stuff. Beaver fever. Beaver <laughs> fever, yeah. <laughs> so, so was your spring system, your spring water system in place when you got here? Uh, no. no. Well, yes and no. So it was, a, it was a broken system. It was a broken <laughs> system in the past. There's no plumbing. There was no plumbing in the cabin. Um, the toilet, the the bathroom, the only thing in there was the toilet, and that was hooked to the septic. But there was no water coming so, so in. So they were flushing the, with a bucket of water. Right, that was flushing. right. So there was no water coming into the cabin. At one point, they had used a spring that has like a spring box and everything on it. Um, but that system yeah. was no longer <clears throat> up and running. So you guys put in a whole new system. Yeah, so Robert completely plumbed the cabin. So there's water in the bathroom, water in the kitchen. Um, he has everything set up with a pressure tank. We have a gas hot water, on-demand hot water heater. Everything is hooked up and set up like you would for a well. The only thing is that ours is fed off of a 275 gallon storage tote. Um, as opposed to the well. So then when we get the well drilled, everything that's in place except for that tote will move over into the well house and it's all set up and ready to go. Okay, so the stairs that are currently here are somewhat treacherous. They're really steep. Um, not so much, that's not so much what's treacherous about them, it's just that the steps are uneven. We have one step that's like seven inches and the next one's like 13 or 14. So that makes for some really uneven surface. Like there, there's not that equality that you need in your steps. Really? Yeah, so we'll be redoing the entire staircase eventually. Like Robert said, the refrigerator is going to be sitting here, so we're going to shove the staircase back and kind of wrap it over there 180 degrees, kind of take up some more of that space in the middle of the cabin. This top one, this top stair is 7 inches and the next one I think is 13. <laughs> oh my so, gosh. So eventually the plan is we'll widen the staircase and it'll start a little bit further back. So just have the landing right in front of the door and then it'll go down and turn and kind of angle this way. But this will go all the way over to this wall. And then there will be a small um, like built-in bookcases all along the bottom, except for right here, there will be a, like a small step so that you can access. Oh, that's quite a bit of storage. All of this storage here. I like how it's hot up here. Yes. <sighs> and I do not have um, a light in there at the moment I can turn on, but there's a ton of st attic storage. That's so cool though. Yeah. Although it could almost be, although it's too short for a bedroom, even f like maybe if you had kids that were really little. Yeah. It could almost be like a child's room, but does it have insulation in it? Um, it's, uh, no, it's not insulated. So that would make sense to why it's so hot in there if there's no insulation and mm -hmm. it's just in the top. 
Yep. Whoa, you just feel that heat. Yeah, it just comes out of there. It's like, let's close that now. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> but horrible. It, <laughs> but it'll be nice to have that once we insulate it and finish it out, it'll be nice to have that all for storage. Yeah. We thought about ripping it out and vaulting the ceilings, but then our ceilings are already so high, it's not necessary. Uh, and we don't want to lose that storage because it is such a small cabin. Yeah. So, so that's why we have the air conditioner up here is to keep the bedroom comfortable at night and why we'll put the bedroom downstairs also so that you know we don't have to have the AC running as much. I think we'll probably just put this as an office. For yeah. Our we try when we're designing and reconfiguring the cabin, we're doing our best to make it work for us, make it work for the space, but also make it so that it's resaleable. Yeah. You never know what's gonna happen in life. You never know if you're just gonna have to sell your house one day. So we want it to be set up so that somebody else could walk in and be able to use the space too. Exactly. Right. So this was my first attempt at a door. Um, and it's just built out of cedar two by sixes. Uh, used a router to router um, like a tongue and groove and everything. And um, this is just a raised panel bit right here um, that uh, goes down in the groove, kind of like you'd have on a cabinet door. Um, so I just cut up a bunch of two by sixes and kind of measured everything out, slapped it together. Still obviously needs uh, trim finish and everything around it. Um, but this one went so well, I, I, I still need to put the latch and everything on there, but uh, that one went so well that we made one for the front door as well. So this is the front door we just made. Um, same concept, larger panel down below. And then we found some of these glass panels um, up at a, a second hand store a few years back and then they just been sitting around waiting for a project so went ahead and put in the, the glass panels um, stained it and here it sits um, put some ceiling around the, the door um, obviously we're still in construction mode here so uh, gonna be tearing out the drywall um, we're gonna be changing windows out on the front here and then this will be the kitchen right here. So this is going to be our future uh, kitchen. And we're gonna have an L-shaped kitchen that runs along the wall. And we'll have a sink looking out uh, over the property there. Yeah. So this is our old battered washer and dryer. We've, they've been with us for a long time. Um, we had to bring them in through the window because they wouldn't fit in through the door. So we like slid them up a ladder to get them through the window into the cabin. That's quite the process. <laughs> um, everything's just fed, pressurized through the tank, um, just like you would have it, um, you know, like it would be normally. So, uh, I don't know. It's, it's we're a... waiting. These are in the process of trying to die. So we're limping along yeah. on this set. We bought them when we bought our very first house, which yeah. was like 12 years, 12 ago. years ago. So I'm surprised they're still running. But eventually what we'll do is we'll have a stacker set here and then this is gonna be a built-in with like a cabinet on the one side and then stack washer and dryer. And then these two windows will be gone and there'll be a smaller window right there. So we found that with living in a small house, you kind of have to go up because there's not room to go out. Mm -hmm. So we have to do like built-ins and use the space that most people would just have open and airy. I'm like, we, we have to build in something there because we just don't have the floor space for it, so. And, and we were both outdoor people. We like to be outdoors. Yeah. And so, okay, we need somewhere to sleep and eat and, you know, sit down if we want to relax. And other than that, we like to be outside working. She loves to garden. Um, I like, like to help her in the garden. I like to do woodworking projects, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I'll build a little shop area where I can have all my tools. And yep. that big of a house we just don't need. Yeah.